everyone, this is Ginger from My Sister Scrapper. Um, today I just have a real quick little um, tutorial I want to share with you. I've had several people ask about how I make my pages in my mini albums. Um, for example, this one is constructed of envelopes um, for the pages, which I normally don't like to use. And you can use envelopes, but my reasoning for not liking to use envelopes is you've got all the inner workings of the envelope in there and sometimes your pages, your tags can get kind of, um, or your photo mats can get kind of stuck in there. So um, I just like to make my pages out of cardstock using the whole envelope concept. Um, so for this one I did use envelopes because I wanted the copper color, but normally I don't. I make my own. And with my old Curiosity Shop um, mini album, that's how I made these pages was with cardstock. And so that's what I'm going to show you. Um, this right here. So basically that way when you put your tag in, there's nothing that's going to uh, inhibit your tag from sliding in and out. There's no, it's just smooth card stuck inside. It's really simple and I feel kind of silly doing a tutorial, but I've had so many people ask if I would show them how I do it. So um, that's what I'm going to do today. So what you're going to need, um, and these are just the measurements that I choose to use. You can make them whatever size and I will share that with you later. I do use um, the Laura Dennison Stack the Deck binding system and I'm not going to show you that because she has a fabulous tutorial out, uh, um, on YouTube on how to do that but I will put the link to her um, Stack the Deck binding tutorial um, on my blog so check that out and it's really simple but um, it's the best. I, this is the only binding I use anymore it's wonderful so thanks Laura. <clears throat> so what you'll need is you're going to need a bone folder some 12 by 12 paper and it has to be it doesn't have to be 12 by 12 but if you want to get the um, the height of your pages this is what I recommend and you can get two pages out of one sheet so you would need for the stack the deck binding you would need six pages so it's going to take three pieces of 12 by 12 solid cardstock and um, I will tell you that not all cardstock is the same um, some of the cardstock does not score as well as other cardstocks score I have found that out just by trial and error so pick the one that you like the best. Um, I do like the Michaels Recollections black cardstock. I use that a lot. I love their craft until they discontinued it in the 12x12. But um, I did find the Hobby Lobby's uh, brand of 12x12 craft colored cardstock scores and folds really well. So those are the two that I prefer to use. Um, there's others out there, but this is just what I like to use. Because not all cardstock is the same. Because I don't like it when you score and fold your cardstock and you have to get a really good crease that... You know, the sometimes the paper tears. It kind of comes apart or whatever. So that's those are the brands that I use. You're going to need a scoring tool. Um, if you don't have a scoreboard, you can use your cutter. Um, but I use this. It works good and I like it. And then, of course, your paper trimmer. And some adhesive. Of course, I use my ATG for this. So here we go. And like I said, um, it... My pages are created on the concept of the envelope page, and that's what a lot of people use are envelopes. In fact, I think in um, several videos I've seen out there, they do use envelopes. And to do the envelopes, you just take your whatever size envelope you want. You go ahead and you seal up the, um, the flap like so. So you seal the whole thing up, and then what you do is you take your paper trimmer and you trim just a smidgen off of um, the this end here that you've sealed and then flip it around and you trim off another smidgen or whatever you want to cover much however you want your pages to be um, you just trim the both ends so you basically have like a tube Okay, and then this is where you'll attach that to your stack the deck binding, and this is the opening for your pocket. And again, the reasons why I don't like to use envelopes, number one, is that they're thinner, but I don't like all this, this stuff in here. All these little flaps and things, so it just kind of bugs me. But, it, again, that's just me. So i just taken this concept and applied it with cardstock, and like I said, it's really, really simple. So, um, what I like to do, and this is basically the standard page size that I use um, for almost all of my mini albums. I think it's a great size. It works great if you're using the 6x6 six six paper pads. Um, so, anyway, this is what I choose to use. What you're going to do is you're going to take your 12x12 12 12 and you're going to cut it down to 4 and 3 quarters. 
so you just take your paper and cut it like this. So I go ahead and I, you would need six of these for a mini album. So cut six strips and again you can get two off of one piece of 12 by 12 and then the rest you can save for tags and stuff. So then you're going to take your strip, your four and three quarters by 12 inch strip, and take your scoring board out. Oops, sorry, did we drop the camera? And put it on the 12 inch side. Take your um, scoring tool. And you're going to make your first score at five and three quarters. And your next one at 11 and a half. And really, that's it. That's your page. <laughs> so then what you do is you take and you fold this up and give it a good crease and then you take this one flip it around and fold it in like this and basically that's your page that's it that's your little tube and then you take your adhesive and you run your adhesive on the half inch little flap here and then Go ahead and stick it down. So that's my page. I know. Simple, huh? But you know what? It's effective and it works great. And like I said, I like this size because it gives you a four and three quarter by five and three quarter inch page. Now you will lose a little bit here because of your binding, because when you stick this on your binding mechanism. What I do when I get all my six pages done is I like to dry fit this onto my binding. Um, sometimes I found that you can either angle your corners of your binding or you can just trim off a little tiny bit. So I, what I do is I take my, um, my binding piece and again Laura Dennison has all the measurements and um, she has a great tutorial on YouTube and I'll put a link to that. And I just like to dry fit it to make sure that these are going to slide on really easily. So see how this is just a little too snug for my liking? So what I would do is flatten this out and get my paper trimmer out. <coughs> just trim an end off of me. Take it and just trim off maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Oops, that was really crooked. Let's try it again. See? Isn't it great to make mistakes on camera? Love it! <laughs> So just trim off a little bit. You don't want too much. You don't want a big gap in there because you do want to make sure um, your pages are all even. So then you just take it and try it again and stick it on there and there. See how easily that goes on? So what you want to do since there is a little wiggle room in there is either line it all up at the bottom or line them up at the top. Otherwise your pages might be off a little wonky. So you just take it and then you just stick it on there like that. You put your... Um, your score tape or your adhesive, and I would just use this ATG gun for right now for demonstration purposes, but normally I would use score tape on this. I would not use this. <coughs> and we'll run some on this side, which is probably not real bright because I have tape on the other side, but who says I, I'm a bright person? See, like that, that's not what we want to do, but oopsie. Normally you would just use your score tape. So then you take your um, your page, your first page, and again you would have all your pages created, and then go ahead and stick it on there like that, bring it all the way down to the crease. Don't go over because you want your page to fold, and stick it down. And then I like to take my bone folder and crease my edges. So that's your first page, and then you just keep going and put them all in there. I do like to go ahead and decorate my pages before I put them on my binding. Um, I just It just gives me a little more room to work, work with, and it's not so cumbersome. But that's basically how I make my pages. And then you would cut your photo mat, and I think I cut my photo mats to um, four and a half by five and a half. So we'll do that with this right here. I'll just show you a four and a half by five and a half usually works pretty good. That's a quarter inch smaller than um, my page. But I did lose a little bit because this is a three quarter inch here, but I kind of like my tags to stick out a little bit. So, so four and a half by five and a half. 
and then that goes right in there. And then what I like to do is you can use a decorative edge on here, or if you don't want that much sticking out, you can trim them down a little bit more to maybe four and a quarter. The little A2 size cards you can buy at Staples that have all the little scallop edges, they fit really good in this, in this size of page. So. so right there like that. And you can, you know, round your corners, but basically that's how I make my mini albums. So there you go, a real quick tutorial on how I make my mini album pages. And again, that's, this is the page construction I used for my old Curiosity Shop mini album. I just did one on both sides. So there you go, everybody. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, just let, uh, let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.